Medical science generally accepts the electric nature of life and this understanding is used every day by doctors. Even our perception of the world is based on electrical signals. We often imagine that light, sound, smells and taste directly enter the brain in order to create our sensory experience. But what we sense as reality is really an elaborate and highly complex network of electrical impulses. Electricity is the currency of the brain. The brain can only make sense of what our senses experience by converting all of the different sensory inputs into electrical signals. One of the most dramatic illustrations of the electric nature of the brain can be seen in the work of Dr. Jose Delgado, a neurophysiologist who was at Yale University from 1946 to 1974. In the 1960s, Dr. Delgado showed that he was able to remotely control the behavior of a charging bull. By connecting a radio antenna to electrodes inserted inside the bull's brain, Dr. Delgado was able to stop the bull from charging by simply pressing a button on a remote controller. The electrical signal immediately switched off the bull's aggression. But does the electric nature of life run even deeper than this? For more than 600 years, scientists have postulated the existence of electric or electromagnetic fields that govern all life. In the 15th century, Paracelsus, one of the most influential medical scientists in Europe at the time, referred to an entity that presides over the growth and form of all living things. Isaac Newton and others postulated the existence of cosmic ether that either acted as a medium for electromagnetic radiation or directly consisted of electromagnetic fields. Mesmer related health to the regulation of weightless fluids in the body and wrote about animal magnetism, which was described as the basis of all sensation connecting the individual to the whole universe. The concept of a controlling biofield persisted for centuries and various attempts were made to define it. In more recent times, Harold Saxton Burr, professor of anatomy at Yale University School of Medicine, began experiments to actually measure the biomagnetic field associated with living organisms. Professor Burr strongly believed that the electromagnetic properties of living things represented an organizing field that kept living tissue from falling into a chaotic state. He called this the life field. Work in this area was advanced further by orthopedic surgeon Robert Becker, Dr. Becker was interested in a wide range of electromedical applications. In addition to advancing the work of Harold Burr, Dr. Becker also further developed the theory of the current of injury. When the body was uh, cut or traumatized in some way, the area near that uh, disturbance showed a small current. And uh, this was something that uh, lay around as a scientific fact for many years until it was resurrected, in a sense, by Bob Becker, who thought of this as perhaps uh, being something more than just a casual observation and began to uh, use this as a method of uh, regeneration. Despite having impeccable credentials, Professor Burr, Dr. Becker, and others were mostly ignored by the medical community. This was most likely because earlier attempts at electromedicine were much less scientific. The electric belt was sold as the common sense treatment for the weak man to cure everything from cancer to impotency. And uh, it was quackery. But at the time, you could also go to the medicine show in a carnival fashion where they have colored alcohol uh, water that they're, they're claiming is, is 
going to cure everything. So those were not legitimate drugs and those were not legitimate devices. Dr. Kirsch, Daniel Kirsch, who's invented this little machine to make him quit hurting. Dr. Daniel Kirsch, a neurobiologist, designed the Alpha Stem 2000 device and the home version, the Alpha Stem 350, in 1981. And this new device actually uses electricity to control your pain. Dr. Daniel Kirsch, who has created a new machine called the Alpha Stim 2000, a pain relieving machine. You suffer from anxiety, insomnia, depression, or chronic pain, but you don't want to take drugs to treat your problem. Maybe the answer for you, CBS 2's Dr. Max Gomez shows us that it clips to your ears. No pills or invasive procedures, just a soothing 20 minute session with this, the Alpha Stim. Alpha Stim has been continuously developed during the last 36 years. The model released in 1981 was not quite as portable as the 8th generation device available today. Alpha Stim is a form of cranial electrotherapy stimulation, or CES. CES involves the delivery of electrical stimulation through the skull by the attachment of electrodes. Since the brain is mostly electrical in nature, it can readily be modulated by electrical intervention. Alpha Stim is the most used and the most researched form of CES. In the 36 year history of Alpha Stim, uh, we estimate that there was uh, well over 15 million people treated. We use electricity and a very small amount of electricity, microcurrent, uh, which is millionths of an amp. And we use that in the brain to treat anxiety, insomnia, and depression. And we can also use the same current and same waveform on the body to treat pain peripherally. The Department of Defense and the Veterans Administration is using alpha stem cranial electrotherapy stimulation extensively for treating anxiety, uh, insomnia, and depression. Um, post-traumatic stress disorder, traumatic brain injury. So we have seen about a 65% of our market in this country is to the government uh, for those uses. They do pain control as well, um, but the psychiatry market, the behavioral health market, psychologists are um, the, the most avid users of alpha stem for the brain stimulation. I think what we're seeing in the 21st century is uh, some much more robust data, both in terms of basic and translational science, and especially in terms of uh, clinical results. Professor Boris Pash is director of the Comprehensive Cancer Center at Wake Forest University Medical Center and associate editor for the Journal of the American Medical Association. Professor Pash and his colleagues have developed a novel treatment that uses very low intensity radio frequency electromagnetic fields to target specific types of cancer. The device, known as the Therabionic device, uses two waves, a carrier wave set at 27.12 MHz and a modulation wave that is specific to the type of cancer being treated. We initiated this research in 2001, and after a couple of years, we, uh, we were quite surprised to find that the same modulation frequencies were found over and over in patients with the same type of tumor, irrespective of their gender, their age, and their ethnic status. So it suggested uh, early on by 2003 that um, tumors might respond to some specific frequencies. The problem is that a lot of people have vested interests in keeping the old paradigm alive because you can sell molecules. You can sell molecules and drugs. In America, it has been reported that 70% of people now take at least one prescription drug and an estimated $330 billion is spent each year on medications. This has resulted in prescribed medications becoming a leading cause of death. The adverse effects of medications are now responsible for at least 106,000 deaths each year. You cannot get through the day without being inundated with drug ads. I mean, the, the, the economic difference is, is, is uh, you know, more than David and Goliath. You know, it's just a huge amount of money being spent uh, to sell you on drugs and everyone everything else is considered outside of the norm and so-called alternative medicine uh, uh, or complementary or integrative which is a better term being used today but 
it's different and and it's not accepted they accept new drugs very easily uh, as part of the whole program but they don't accept uh, disruptive ideas like this is better than a drug but the drug are the standard so how can anything be better than the drug <laughs> you know? it's 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 a mindset